In this video, we will be explaining how to solve a problem involving a combination circuit. We are finding the voltage, current, resistance, and power at each resistor. To do this, we will need to look for series and parallel circuits, combine them, and then use the equations we learned in the first video to solve for what we are looking for. I will start by looking for a series circuit. Series circuits only have one path for the current to take. R1 and R2 are on the same path for the current to flow through, so they are series. To combine the two, you just add the two resistors. So R1 plus R2 equals 3 plus 4, which equals 7. Now I will look for a parallel circuit. Parallel circuits have more than one path for the current to flow through. Resistors 3 and 4 have two paths for the current to take, so it is a parallel circuit. To combine the resistors for a parallel circuit, you have to follow the equation 1 over REQ equals 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. So 1 over 7 plus 1 over 5 equals 12 over 35. 12 over 35 equals 1 over REQ but you are looking for R, so you will have to flip the answer to 35 over 12, which equals 2.9. This is the easiest part to make a mistake in, so in solving for parallel circuits, it is important to remember to flip the answer to go from 1 over R to R. We are now left with three resistors in series, R12, R34, and R5. We need to combine them so that we have one circuit with one resistor to find the total resistance. Since they are together in series, we can just add the resistance together. R12 plus R34 plus R5 equals 7 plus 2.9 plus 9, which equals 18.9. 18.9 is the total resistance in this circuit. If you create a chart that has a spot for the total current, power, resistance, and voltage, and then a spot for those things in each resistor. It will make this problem easier because you will know what you are looking for and what you still need to find. You can put this chart in the bottom right-hand corner of your paper because these types of problems get lengthy and you want to keep your work organized. Since we found the total resistance and we already knew the total voltage, which is 10, we can now solve for the current by using the equation V equals IR. Plug in your numbers and you will get I equals 0.53. Now that we solve for the total current, you now have enough numbers to solve for the total power by using P equals VI. Plug your numbers in and P equals 5.3. We just found the total voltage, current, resistance, and power. All that is left is to find each part in each individual resistor. In the first video, Combination Circuits, you learned that series circuits have the same current flowing through each resistor. R1, R2, and R5 are all connected through series. Therefore, the current is equal to the total current, which is 0.53. You might be wondering why R5 is connected in series, but if you pause this video and go back to two slides before this one, you will see that at the end, it does end up to be connected through series. To find the voltage and power in R1, R2, and R5, just use the equation V equals IR and P equals VI. For V1, use the current, which is 0.53, and multiply it by the resistance, which is 3. V1 is 1.59. You use that voltage and multiply it by the current, which is 0.53, to get P1, which is 0.84. Use these same equations to find V2, P2, V5, and P5. Pause this video now if you would like to copy down the rest of the math on this slide. Now put the numbers you got for current, power, and voltage for each resistor into the chart. Now all we have to do is solve for R3 and R4. From video one, you also learned that parallel circuits have the same voltage at each resistor. Add up the voltage in R1, R2, and R5, and subtract it from the total voltage to get 1.52, which is the voltage for V3 and V4. Since we now know the voltage for each and the resistance, we can solve for the current by using V equals IR. V3 equals 1.52, and R3 equals 7. So plug the numbers into the equation, and I3 equals 0.22.
Now that you have the current for R3, you can find the power by using the equation P equals VI. P3 equals 1.52 times 0.22, which equals 0.33. Now use the same equations to find I4 and P4. Pause this video now if you want to write down the math. Enter the last numbers into the chart and you will see that you have completely answered the question. You may be wondering, is there a way to check my answer since I did so much math and it is easy to make a mistake? The answer is yes. If you add up all of the powers for each resistor, it should come very, very close to the total power. Our total power was figured out to be 5.3 and when we add up the powers, we get 5.28. So we correctly did this problem.